Do you like references? Star Trek Lower Decks sure hopes you do, as this week's episode presents an unwarranted and forced walk down memory lane. At the start of Veritas, the Lower Decks crew find themselves abruptly and confusingly imprisoned on a planet belonging to the alien species known as the Primes. When their captors eventually come to retrieve them, the four are taken to what appears to be a giant alien courtroom and discover that the senior staff of the USS Cerritos is suspended in a beam of white light. Upon their entrance into the room, a member of the Prime named Klar informs Mariner, Tendi, Rutherford, and Boimler that they must offer testimony regarding the actions of the senior staff on a particular star date. Confused and worried over the circumstances their commanding officers have found themselves in, the four begin to individually recall their experiences on the day in question. Boimler and Mariner reveal that their late arrival to their post resulted in a conflict with an alien species, which in turn eventually led to Rutherford and Tendi being assigned to two separate covert ops missions alongside members of the bridge group. Rutherford and Tendi then explain that they were only able to complete their respective goals due to their personal action movie style heroics, much to Clark's disbelief. As the stories from the crew of the Cerritos begin to pile up, Clark stops the proceedings. Taking note of their confusion, Clark explains to the team that they are not participating in a trial, but rather a ceremony celebrating his rescue by the Cerritos. After the misunderstanding is cleared up and Clark's celebration is unfortunately ruined, the crew return to the Cerritos, where Freeman commends them for their defense of Starfleet before ushering them off the bridge for asking questions about the episode's many plot holes. Trial episodes have long been a staple of the Star Trek franchise, with Rules of Engagement and The Menagerie being among some of the fanbase's most beloved episodes, largely due to their intricate and philosophical explorations of morality and legality. Additionally, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, provided the visual inspiration for the episode's courtroom. Yet, Lower Dex's attempt at a courtroom episode lacks this particular mystique. As while the settings and rules of the trial feel very appropriate in the universe of the franchise, the fact that no one is informed on the topic being discussed, or even the true nature of the gathering, leads the audience to be just as confused about the whole ordeal as the crew is. While the presentation of the story as a series of recollections is a classic and enjoyable framing device, it fails to stick its atmospheric landing due to its chaotic nature and subversive attempts at humor. Veritas also suffers greatly from the series' most glaring weakness, its over-reliance on references to previous Star Trek lore as a source of humor. Throughout the episode, the crew argue over their opinions of Roga, Daenar, and Khan, Rutherford performs a version of Uhura's fan dance during his secret mission, and Tendi's Black Ops team uses a Romulan warbird to infiltrate their objective. These nods contribute little to the actual events of the episode itself, and serve only to make certain fans light up at the mere mention of other Star Trek media. However, the most egregious of these references is undoubtedly the appearance of Q, thankfully and welcomingly voiced by original actor John DeLancey. His role is brief, appearing only during one of Mariner's flashbacks and as the final gag of the episode, and his presence is only used as a vehicle to parody the godlike being's eccentric obsession with testing members of humanity. As a result, Q is reduced to nothing more than a minor annoyance to the Cerritos, and is left feeling more like a vehicle for random humor than any particular life-threatening challenge or moral quandary. For all its flaws, Veritas does present audiences with one upside. The series continues to remain rather well animated and directed, with scenes such as Tendi's fight against a group of Romulans or the gathering of Romulan warships around her team standing out as a particular highlight of the show's visual quality. Unfortunately, the effort put into the production of the series is failed by the show's Rick and Morty-esque art style, which promotes a sense of low effort, by the book's adult animation rather than one of adventure, excitement, or even sincerity. Overall, Veritas is a disappointing follow-up to the brief improvement in quality seen last week in Much Ado About Boimler, as the series appears to fall back on its lazy and predictable ways. The constant references, including the appearance of Q, are a display of the series' inability to develop its own identity, as it continues to rely on the accolades of past series to endear itself to its audience. Q fans may be excited for the few seconds he appears on screen, but for the rest of Star Trek's fanbase, this episode does nothing more than dash any hope that the series' writing will improve within the season's last two episodes. Pros. The high levels of animation and production quality, John Delancey returning as Q, and the fact that at least all four of the core characters finally get to share an adventure together. Cons. Too many references, Q is turned into an inconsequential annoyance, and the trial format of the episode loses steam near the end. Overall, 3.5 out of 10.